So the example we want to consider is uh, the two dimensional points. I would suggest take a one minute or two, pause the video and then read this passage over here and then think about if you were to uh, turn this into Java programs. So what kind of uh, keywords you can identify over here. Okay, pause the video and think about it. All right, assuming that you have thought about it, let's uh, just do some very quick exercise together with you, okay? So I got example one and two over here. We'll do example one together. I'll leave example two as an exercise for you, okay? So here is my principle for you. You want to identify critical nouns and also verbs, okay? Typically, not always. So for nouns, they will be turned into uh, either classes or attributes. You have to uh, make a judgment, of course. And whereas for verbs, they will be turned into the behavior of the uh, template. So it could be just the methods. And let me be a little bit more precise. It would be either accessor or mutator. Mutators, okay? It can be multiple. So that'll be the general principle. But let's see uh, how we can identify them, okay? Here, let's say uh, points. So this will be basically the template name, right? So we should talk about points on a two-dimensional plane. So two-dimensional plane, do we actually need to turn that into a class? That's kind of up to you, but in this case, we don't. So I let me not highlight it, right? Are identified by the assigned the assign distances from the x and y axis, uh, axis, okay? And also a point may move it may move arbitrarily, move arbitrarily towards any direction on the plane. Given two points, we are often interested in knowing the distance between them. Knowing the distance between them. Okay, right. So, guys, I think uh, that's about the uh, you know the verbs, uh, verbs and nouns I can identify. Let's see what we can do. So you can see here. I would say for this one here, since we talk about this particular kind of entities, so we may simply just turn that into a class, points. And then, uh, what about sign distances? So here I'm trying to be a little bit not so direct. So sign distances are simply just the x and y coordinates, right? So if you think about this is the two dimensional plane, and over here at this point here, you want to know what the distance is from the y axis and what the distance is from the x axis, right? And then you can really got uh, maybe some uh, value a and b, something like that. So I would say for the sign distances, so this can just be the attributes, how we characterize uh, each point, uh, maybe x and y, for example, right? And then uh, a point may move arbitrarily towards. So this will be some method we can uh, define. You will see later. For example, you may want to move up, move down, move left, or move uh, right. And also, we want to know uh, the distance between them. So for example, if you got two points, let's say point number one here, and also what's the distance from this point uh, to, uh, to this point from the origin. So that could be one uh, behavior to actually show, right? And also, uh, given P1 and also P2, what's the difference, uh, what's the uh, distance between them? So that'll be another uh, behavior you can show uh, on the points, right? So that's, uh, there's really a lot of flexibility over here for the judgment. So I'm just trying to show you what's really generally that can be done. However, for this course, you typically don't have to do such analysis. So this is more about design and also do some requirements analysis. That's something you can practice if you want to do some uh, uh, outside the class projects, that's something you can uh, keep in mind. You just always have to pay attention to nouns and also verbs. And you don't necessarily choose every noun and every verb. You have to be you have to be selective. How to, uh, how to really make the best selection is really up to your experience. You have to, it's more like a, a iterative process to really choose something, drop something, and choose another set and drop another set, right? So that will be uh, the general principle. All right, let's go back. And then for this example number two about the entities person, I'll leave that to you as an exercise. If you want to discuss it with me, feel free to drop by my office hour. All right, so uh, we talk about uh, the template for the points, right? And also we got attributes that will be more or less corresponding to noun, right? The sound nouns, not all the nouns. And also we got behavior, which will be all the verbs over here, right? How to move up and how to get the distance from. All right, and then let's now speak about some 
uh, critical points about object orientation, right? About templates versus instances. Let me talk about it quickly. Okay, so this is really uh, the extract from your slides. Let's say we talk about again the example for the points. Let's say we got one template called points, and then we characterize every point instance by x and y. So all the points share this particular structure, right? Let's just go over the point very quickly. A template defines what's shared by a set of uh, a set of related entities. For example, two-dimensional points. So we got common attributes and also we got common behavior. So now let's talk about two instances. So here we talk about let's say point in, uh, point instance P1, and also we got uh, let me just use another one. Let's say we got point instance P2. We got P1 and P2. And let's now visualize them quickly, right? We'll talk about visualization uh, later as well. So here you got one instance over here. So this will be uh, of instance P, uh, points. And then you got two attributes. So you're going to get uh, X and Y over here. And then you just got another one. So which uh, for which I'll simply just copy. So we got another instance over here. So that'll be P2. Let me just put a different color here so you would know there are uh, distinct instances, okay? So let's say this one here is P1. So it's really pointing to this particular object. We spoke about it in the tutorial. And also we got P2, also pointing to this particular uh, distinct objects. So we got P1 and P2. Let's talk about it very quickly. quickly. So we got P1 and P2. Let's say P1 is actually three, uh, three, four. So that means this particular instance got three and four over here, and another one P2 actually got minus four, minus three. So minus four, minus three. Okay. Let's now go over the points quickly. Okay. Instances of the same template may exhibit distinct behavior, even though they have the same shear structure. You can see. Both P1 and P2, they share the same structure. They got XY and also XY. However, they got instance specific values for attributes. For example, you can see the instance specific value for X of P1 is actually three versus minus four uh, for P2, right? And let's see this. If I say P1 moves up for one units and also P2 moves up for one units. So they're performing the same operation. However, their uh, result might simply just be different, right? Let's see. So let's say here, let's say I want to say uh, whenever you move up, that means your Y unit is going to be incremented by one. So for P1 to move up, so you will go from four to five. And for P2 to go up, you will go from minus three to minus two. So you can see the result will just be five and e minus two, even though you're performing the same operation, but the result will just be different over here, right? It's really easy to see. And another example would be, what about I simply want to see the behavior of what's the distance from the origin, right? So if you recall your high school math, so if you want to calculate the distance uh, from a point to some, to the origin, for example, this is my point, uh, x and y over here, and what's the distance over here? So it would be uh, x squared plus, uh, it would be x squared plus y squared and take the square root, okay? That's basically what you learn from the high school math, right? So now for P1 and P2, even though the definition for the formula will just be the same to be applied to calculate what's the difference uh, between P1 and the origin, and also what's the, uh, what's the uh, distance from P2 to the origin, the formula will be the same. However, the specific values for X and Y would be different. One would be three and five. That's why you'll see three and five over here. And the other one would be minus four and minus two. So you can see minus four and minus two. They will simply just give to you different values. So that's why they will simply exhibit different behavior. So the final outcome would just be different, even though the definition for the operation would be the same. Okay. So that's uh, very important to realize, but hopefully you already grasped up that point for the tutorial video. All right, let me go back to the slides. And that's exactly what I just explained to you. You can just review it later. And uh, here, so this is just another example about the person. I'm gonna skip this example here because that one is very similar to the member class you learned in the tutorial video. You can also review it uh, without any problem. Okay, I'm just gonna skip this part here. All right, so finally, uh, to end this video, it's really important for you to remember 
the classes that we talk about in the Java programming uh, context, they are simply, they really mean templates. And whenever you got a template, that means you can instantiate the template for as many times as you like to create instances. In Java terminology, instances are objects. All right, so we got one template here for person. We got another template here for points, right? And when I illustrate later in uh, for this week, I will use maybe uh, this particular template to illustrate because this one here, you have seen that uh, in a very similar way uh, in your uh, tutorial video for the member class.